ready? We're already recording. Okay. Hello, everyone. Yes. Welcome back. Yes. Not an album review today. Today we're going to review a concert. A concert. Journey Death Leopard. Woohoo! I'm Becca. I'm Kat. I'm, I'm Adam. <laughs> I'm still Adam. <laughs> <laughs> no exciting new name for us no, today. No. Many names. Uh, anyway. So. Yeah, we all. It was went a grand old to, time. Yeah. So yeah. How many? How, let's hold up. On, how many Journey Death Leopard concerts have you been to this tour? <laughs> So we've seen them four times. <laughs> this tour. This tour. Ten times total for me. Six. Six for her. One for you. Uh -huh. Caveat, Def Leppard is our favorite band. Far and away. So Easily. That is why we've been to so many agree. <laughs> concerts. However, it gives us a great, uh, great, great fodder for this. Mm -hmm. So, all right. It's a great old time. This concert. Yeah. I'm really glad. I mean, I, I know they're swapping back and forth between who opens. Yes. yes. It's co-headline no tour offense, in the truest sense of the words. Right. No offense to Journey. I'm so glad Journey opened for Def Leppard. Okay, yes. so I've actually I, mean, I was read, there for Def Leppard. So I've actually read multiple reviews on this because that's our that's our bias, right? Of that's, course, that's, that's us. We, we'll just go ahead and lay out there our bias, and I think yours as well is going to be. Well, I mean, I, I didn't go to go see a Journey concert. I went right, to exactly. Yeah. So our bias is going to be that we would rather see Def Leppard yeah. close because they're going to be our favorite. So Journey, no matter how good they are, they're going to be a letdown to us after Def Leppard. Yeah. Um, I was just, I was just gonna say that. We've seen them with a lot of bands. Like I've, we've seen them with Tesla and Poison and Night Ranger and Foreigner and Journey. And there, I would feel safe saying it again. This is acknowledging my own biases that there is not a band out there that can touch Leopard's caliber of showmanship in a live setting. I feel comfortable saying that again. I'm very biased, but just seen them with lots of other acts that I love. But well, no one touches them on so stage. So this is where I was going to bring back. So th that is our bias. Yeah. Um, however. We have friends, plenty of, from talking to plenty of other fans who have been to these shows, and I've actually read several, been reading up on several concert reviews lately, just because they'll pop up on my Google Google feed, and I'll click Google them feed is awesome. I know it is. It knows me very well. Um, it uh, and they all agree um, that Leopard. I mean, they're the, the level of showmanship and production. Just the, the they take the night. How how clean they are on stage, and how um, I mean, the, how completely comfortable that they seem to be with who they are, and at this point in their careers. And all, they're willing to go back and I mean, give the crowds exactly what they came for. You know, they're going to go play their hits note for note. Um, they're not trying to change it up. They're not doing these long solos and and things like that 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 we're not there to see. <laughs> um, you know, um, and they're, so they're, they're extremely high energy. They are so yeah. cohesive as a band, largely because I mean, they've had the same lineup now since the early nineties, yeah, since 90, mid sure. 90, You know, thirty two, ninety three. And that's I mean, and, and then that's really just replacing one band member since almost since they formed, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it's as original of lineup almost as they come these days. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're so good together. Um, anyway, but the big points that most people have made, um, the critics on that I've said, that I've read, mm -hmm. um, is first of all, just the energy, um, and how clean and how good they still sound, you know, they Joe, he, he, he knows when to take things down or when to seed a, 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 a note or two here and there to his bandmates yeah. or to the crowd. Mm -hmm. Um, he knows, he knows when to, when, when to he not knows how to play that game. Yeah. They, they yeah. play that game very well. They don't sing the songs that he can't sing anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So that comes out, they, they sound like they should. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and they just, it, it's almost not fair to have a band like Journey who gets to close with Don't Stop Believing. And confetti cannons. In quotes, yeah. America's alternate national anthem. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. With the arena fans singing, which yeah. there was one review that I read that was even saying that that was the, high, that song was the highlight of the night. But even despite that, Journey yeah. still could not stand yeah, up. Yeah, that's a trump card not um, many bands can play, right? You can, not many bands can yeah. oh, here's Don't Stop Believing with confetti. And that wasn't You're enough welcome, one, really. You're really um, into the confetti thing. That really sells it for you, or...? It's fun. It's, it's really fun. If you're on the floor, you weren't. No, right. no, we weren't on the floor. I know. It's just confetti. But it it was fun. It was. It's a good. It's a good environment. And they. I actually preferred the way the they did it at our. So when we went to see them in Baltimore, the set list was a little different. It was. Um, and they Pretty shot much. off the confetti. Um, right after it was, they came Don't back. They came back from the encore and they played "Don't Stop Believing." Right. I don't, they didn't really have an encore because they played "Don't Stop Believing." The confetti came off and then they. Slam right in any way you want. But that's I think they had already. That was their I, encore. But I think they had already left. Oh, they, they left. They Maybe. came back out. They played "Don't Stop Believing." You think that's the end? They ended that with confetti, and then right as while the you're confetti, distracted. while you're distracted and all that, like as everyone's attention. I mean, they gave it the perfect amount of time. As everyone's attention finally comes back to them, they came and punched in hard with any way you want it. And it was. I mean, I have never seen a stadium light up like that. I mean, it was. 
That was definitely that was, was the so highlight much fun. from their set yeah. um, that first time around. Absolutely, was that moment. Uh, so, but even then, I, I think Leopard Leopard, Leopard still takes, takes the night. night. Um, they always will for us. Which I so mean, we're not for you. You're so, a little more bi uh, unbiased. Sure. So I mean, I, what I think is important to note is it's not that Journey was lacking by any means. Oh no! I would have been happy walking out after Journey. I mean, that yes. was a fantastic. Yes. Concert. Oh yeah, I, honestly, Super some energy. part of you sits there after Journey goes off and goes, "Wait, we're only halfway through this yeah. concert." Like, oh my god! Yeah, it's yeah. a long <laughs> it's, night. It's a long night. It was, it was fantastic. Yes, yeah, so good. And Bridgestone Arena, Nashville. Um, yes, yeah. Fantastic venue for it. So loud. It was. They're, so loud. It could have been mixed a little better, I think. Yeah, there was. Especially Leopards was. Uh, Leopards was a little off. The, yeah. The mix, their clip. But it was or still. Something. Arena is the way to see that concert. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to We, open we air. saw them in uh, Atlanta in the big stadium, which was a totally cool experience in its own right. And so glad we went because to be with 40,000 other fans. Sure. Singing Don't Stop Believing or singing Course and Sugar Me. Sure. Incredible. Yeah. However, you do lose some of the effect, yeah. the intensity, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The. Um, it was interesting because it's basically just you and twenty thousand other people singing karaoke with the band. Because between the two of them, there's so Fantastic. many hits. Between yeah. the two of them. Yeah. And they, I mean, that's us. Us sitting here bragging on Leopard. Let's cut it, cut it back Let's to cut Journey. To Journey. Yeah, yeah, Journey was. Journey is absolutely. I mean, and still very. They were still very. They're they're a high energy great act. If only because yeah. they've got so many good songs. I mean, like mm -hmm. any way you want it, and I'm, so many. Yeah great yeah. hits like that that are very high energy they just also want to milk every emotion out of songs like open arms and faithfully which i mean they totally do the mm, trade I'm, I'm i'm there for those too yeah. um yeah. those were and i think it's worth incredible. i think it's worthy of note of that <laughs> leopard is that cohesive unit and the same scene but jury now that steve smith's come back in the past year or two is is now the same lineup that was there in 81 83 um or no or, minus well, well yeah minus are now um, again being the vivian being the switch for leopard not even on the same planet of comparison because Vivian's been there over like 26 years now and Arnell's been there like a decade or so. Um, but, but still, a still decade. most He's of not fresh. Most, He's been doing yeah, the rest of the lineup is all yeah. original. And if you've got to have a stand in for Steve Perry, Arnell, oh Arnell. that guy's high. Let's energy. talk about Arnell. High energy. Okay, so Journey, one of their one of their kind of low points is the fact that they're, in the words of a review I read that I thought was phrased very well, the case for Journey as mega rock stars at this point. It comes down to Arnell and Neil Sean. The other three pretty much kind of stay are, are kind, of, kind of content to stay in the background. Yeah, sure. Ross Valerie will interact some. He's got some. He'll make some faces that. But kind he's of your bassist. bassist. But he's your bassist. Kind, bassist. Of, kind of fades in the background. Jonathan Kane mostly sits it back at his piano. He'll interact a little bit, but he's very low yeah, energy. Comes out to play guitar. Um, yeah. Comes out to play guitar. Um, but 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 very very contained, very poised. Um, Steve, Steve Smith. I mean, he's the drummer, right? Solo. He's, he's in the back. He's Fantastic. got a mad solo. That Please solo. Talk about that solo. Yeah. Close thing we have to a drummer here. I just remember crying. <laughs> that was fantastic. Well, he's that part where he incredible sleight of hand. Oh, the sleight oh, of yeah. hand tricks he does. Like it won't. He like stops and is, like bouncing off his wrist and like never yeah, was... passes the one strip back and forth. And... At that point, he's just showing off the, the sleight of hand more. Than oh, the for drumming, sure. But... <laughs> it was, it was I it was oh, quite oh absolutely. Oh yeah, it's a long solo though. Yeah. yeah. Well, in a. He's in a button-down dress shirt. Like, how are you not dying of like? He looks so normal. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, also, I'm kind of like just took out the 70s, the way he's dressed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's all coming back. Like, I've seen an episode of that 70s coming show. Back. Arnell, though. Arnell oh. flies around the stage. I mean, the man, like, Never stops moving. all the spinning jump kicks, yeah. and uh, it's, he's always up in the air. He's also very interactive, but he's not, you know, he, we used to kind of draw a scale between Brett Michaels and Joe Elliott, of, of, of front men. As far as Brett Michaels, he is always, I mean, he's your good old boy. He gets out there. He is always shaking hands. He is interacting with everyone. He is the ultimate. Yeah. End of the concert. I am making friends with the fans. Literally kind of goes thing. around and grabs every hand he can before he walks off stage. Le right. Level of, like, interaction. Joe Elliott puts on his leopard skin coat, and he comes out, and he is the ringmaster. Mm -hmm. And he is the, the, the front man. He is working the entire yeah. crowd. He does not overly interact with Makes almost anyone. Makes you believe he's every bit the rock star you think he is. Yeah. Right. So we had kind of drawn that as our, those are opposite ends of the spectrum. With maybe like Kevin, Kevin Cronin, Cronin from Mario Speedwagon somewhere in the middle where he will, he will interact some. He is not quite the, oh, the Joe Elliott is. Nice. But, yeah, I thought you'd like that. <laughs> um, nice. But, but he's, I mean, but he still plays it cool a lot. Yeah. Um, he's, when he does he, throw picks, it's not like handing off that he throws them like 30 rows back. Right. He, he's there for, he's there. <laughs> he's really good at whipping he, those yeah, things he's out. there to work the crowd. Arnell is a different, I, I would put Arnell on an entirely different, different scale. scale because he is, 
he is extremely interactive, but it's not in the Brett Michaels way. It's still in a way that makes you believe he's a rock star. Yeah. yeah. He picks his moments so well. There was actually a moment we were we had really close seats for in a Birmingham. show in Birmingham the week uh, earlier in that same week, and um, you know, a couple concerts in a week. The the people in You've front been of back us, nights, honey. The people in front of us were incredibly sweet and had pushed us up to the guardrail instead. Yeah. Um, and Arnell, there was one point where it, it was faithfully. during faithfully that he saw us right there and and um he had been he had he had kind of been reaching out toward a couple fans and all and so there were a couple times that like we reached out to him in return all, and he you could see him kind of it was kind of a not now yeah kind I'll of be thing. Back. that's it so he's because he's sitting there i mean just pouring no his heart and soul yeah pouring yeah. his heart and soul into that song and, all, and he did as soon as don't stop believing came on you know, and it's a higher energy song and all, he came back around and reached out and shook our hands gave us high fives that's awesome. um, yeah, it was super sweet awesome. but but i think that's the perfect example of he knows when to pick the moments um and, yeah, and how to does. still kind of maintain the the, aura. the rock star aura yeah. uh, so he's a lot of fun while also being just the sweetest little and, ball of energy and he does he sounds incredible he's he sounds great yes to put it in the words again of another review that i think was a spot on i mean people there are people that don't like him and all but i think I, I wish i could phrase it exactly the same way but basically the guy was kind of saying you know journey fans may think they want a steve perry come back and we, we may make some enemies here but if you don't appreciate the story, the, the the true rock star story you have playing out right in front of you. I mean, that's just that's just silly. You're yeah. just you're missing out. Um, yeah. Yeah. This guy, he he really is incredible. Um, yeah, he's whew, he's super good. He he yeah, he is he's great in his own right. Um, so. Should we talk about Neil Sean? Yes, <laughs> let's talk yeah. about Neil. All Sean. of the guitarist. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I will say the first show we ever went to, I saw him uh, his tech come out and was tuning out before the show. Caught a glimpse of the guitar. We're we're a, a good, <laughs> we're we're a decent ways back. I could just barely see the outline. I was like, I think it's a PRS. <laughs> she plays a PRS. And was, anyway, that was just a good moment of like I could I could just see the outline of the headstock, which is I mean it's very distinctive. Oh yeah. But um, you can pick it out anywhere. But it was just funny because I barely caught a glimpse. Of it. I was like, ah no, I probably just missed saw that lights come on. He plays several very beautiful, very PRSs, pretty. So you know, <laughs> if one of them happens to go missing, I didn't say any of this. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, um, when we get to Rick Savage, <laughs> yeah. If I ever go to jail, it's for it's for stealing that blackjack base of his. Um, I'll talk about it later. But <laughs> but yeah, I, I think you worded it perfectly in the the phrasing of like a third of any Journey show. It, if if you were to make a pie chart yeah. of any Journey concert, I think you'd have to make like a third of it Neil Sean solo. <laughs> His soul is now. I think he was having some technical issues at the concert we were he at. He did, I believe. He so. yeah. he he went on for a long time trying. To, he seemed like he was constantly trying to adjust some things. He actually ended up went and kind of like briefly spoke to the band members who were kind of huddled back in the shadows in the corner for a moment. I think that I think they were adjusting plans a little bit because I think something wasn't working quite right. So it was a little less impressive that, uh, than the other shows we'd seen um, because he was. I mean, they're very good. He's a obviously a great guitarist. Um, oh, I yeah. enjoy watching him. Especially when you know Leopard's coming on, it's. <laughs> I mean, they do right. There are a lot more low low moments in the journey. Yeah, set yeah. Should hear in the type of bands they are. Right. The music they write. Now Neil, he's the type of guitarist that's going to get out there and he's going to build the solos and they're going to be really oh, long yeah. and that's. Props to him. He can go do that. Yeah, but. he's like a bit of a. I will say, this, especially there. especially the first time, the first concert I saw. Those were. The moments that kind of would tend to lose me after sure. a while. I mean, right? You want to get yeah. back into the songs you can sing, and you know, what? he was yeah. playing with Santana when he was like 15. Like he's like he's oh, incredible. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's oh, wow. he's like that. incredible level. Like oh, he's brilliant. Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah, about probably that. stepped down from Prince, but like that level sure, of like sure. just just born to play with guitar. Um, but um, can we talk about the National Treasure? Yes. I the see National the Treasure there. that is Jonathan Cain. Jonathan Cain is a national treasure. He is a national treasure. He gets out there in his like white coat. He wore a leopard coat at the moment. He was, he was. He's awesome. That piano solo he does, which I have some footage of that you can I, put in I here if you want. I have the entirety of the piano solo. Bless you. There, About two minutes. It's just, it's so great. I just love that solo. Because he cuts in, he plays elements of songs that they don't have time to play, like When You Love a Woman. Um, or, uh, well, there's another song there. They do play Who's Crying Now. That used, used to be one of the ones he'd work in there. Um, yeah. Oh, it's just so, it's, he's just so good. It, you, I think you he made the point good. of the guy who just, with the lift of a finger, because he always does that number, he just kind of puts his finger up, and then a whole crowd erupts, and then he, like, hits the note, and you're like, yes. Oh, it's 
to be able to control 20,000 people as a lift of a finger. Yeah. You know? And then the soul leads right into it. Well, it used to lead right into open arms. This, the past couple shows has led into Who's Crying Now. Um, but, yeah. And while we're talking about him, faithfully, the song that he wrote by himself um, for his wife is awesome. Um, and I just really enjoy that if you go see them on tour, I don't know how much they're only in the States another month or two, um, pay attention to Ross Valerie during the line of, we all need the clowns to make us smile, because Jonathan wrote that line about Ross, because, you know, he's the guy in the band who kept everyone's spirits high no matter what was going on. Um, so when and they, they spotlight him. They spotlight him. Line, they spotlight him, and he always makes a face. Sometimes they'll throw him on the big screen. We saw it once, and he always makes some clownish face out to the crowd. Cool. I actually got uh, pictures of that, so. Good. Yeah, I think, they, yeah, in, in Nashville, they put him on the big screen. Okay. Right. Um, it's just yeah. a fun fact. That's why they. That's why they highlight. That's him why they have that, that song's written about him. That's that not song. That <laughs> song's not written about him. That line's written about him. Um, but yeah, he's just a national treasure. Go read his book. It's awesome. It came out a couple months ago. Um, so yeah. So if it sounds like we're dissing Journey, we're not. Journey we is love a Journey. Uh, fantastic, fantastic time. Fantastic show. It, the, when Journey went off, the people behind us leaned forward. Wish you'd, you'd gone off to get a snack or something. And a uh, guy that was sitting some... behind us. <laughs> oh, I, leaned, I heard this. Yeah, leaned forward and said. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> there was a, so I, I told him, and um, he's like, and, and, and these two, because it was Caitlin and, and then one Sandra. of our other friends uh, who also graduated from school with us. Um, and so I told him, he was because you guys knew freaking all the lyrics. He's like, I'm 50, and I don't know all the lyrics. Um, so we clearly enjoy them. They're we go a hard. really good time, and we go we go hard yeah, at these concerts. Yeah, you guys do go hard. hard. <laughs> I, I, hear, I hear tell from Kevin that... I, we kind of scared you a bit, and that we maybe went harder than you thought we could. Which no, I feel like no. I should, I'm kind of disappointed that you didn't expect. No, 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 yeah, no, no, that you expected no, less. No, no, I, I expected absolute insanity, and you sort of let me down. No, because you looked almost. You looked very concerned during the concert. There were times where we oh, were I think you. I thought I was going to take an elbow to the eye. I mean, you were quite <laughs> animated. We were at a Death so Leopard concert. That's true. Do. No, no, I know. I just didn't want to, you know, go home with black eye. Right. Seats were a little tight, you know. Like, yeah, so then it, it was, a little, it was tight. a little tight. Yeah, it's that I means the hockey yeah. arena, so. Yeah. But in a way, it almost worked better than being on the floor because, like, because we are staggered. It, it felt like we almost had we had a lot of room in front. Like we could do everyone in front of us. Well, anybody. The people in front of us were kind of tall, I guess, because we and yeah, you, and, you gotta be careful not to hit the people. In front and they, of they did. They, I don't they think they liked us very much, but no, they didn't. It's but fine. We had they were okay. Better. They were also sitting there texting the entire show about yeah, uh, the, the entire journey concert. They were texting about like. When's Leopard coming on? Why is Journey still out there? Yeah. So one well, guy was like Wikipedia Look. Journey. I was like, do that at home when they're not on stage in front of you. Like, right. That was. So we're not gonna put too much stock in their opinions. Um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, concerts are there to enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of enjoying, Mint, should we go to Leopard? Then <laughs> Leopard comes on. So before, hmm, we'll make a comment that we'll we'll appreciate and fans out there who know Leopard will. This tour, they are not playing. Shoot to thrill. Shoot to thrill before they come on stage. They have done that since the 80s. Yeah, there's footage of them on the Hysteria Tour that the song plays before they go on. That is the, the calling card for anyone who knows anything about Leopard. If you were at a concert and you hear Shoot to Thrill come on, Big get the hell to your seat because it's about to go down. But they're not playing it this year. They're playing their cover of Personal Jesus. Which is actually awesome. Which actually works incredibly yeah. well. Um, it's I mean, They I had to replace that song. I, I'm not mad about it, honestly. It, it gave some airplay for this song. And, and it's, it's really it's good. Really, it's, it's really good. Joe's, Joe, Joe's not screaming in the highest register on demand. Right. Um, and it, it just sounds really good. But I, I do very much miss the... Just the iconicness of, of, of knowing that Shoot the Thrill comes on and hearing that and just knowing that, oh, they're, they're, they're next and you know that that's been that way for 30 years kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um... And like, and this on this tour, they also have the countdown on the screens because there's three screens yep. that for Le for Journey are up above, that then for Leopard come down and sit in front of the stage, and they have like a 30 minute like timer that counts down for you, which is, so you already know. But like at normal concerts, you don't have that. So you, it's it's the normal waiting game of when they gonna, when's this song gonna come on, cut off? The lights are gonna go off. So hearing that song come on, it's like oh, okay, cool. This is our like warning instead of just it coming out of nowhere. So we also we did know going into our first concert this tour that they are no longer opening with Let's Go, which they've opened for the last couple years. Yeah, with. two or three years now. Uh, since, since the album came since out. Since the album came out. Before the album came out. Yeah. Um, the tour that they were on when the album was coming out. Yeah. They, they started opening with Let's Go, which, I mean, a song that was Good written... written it was a song opener. that was written to be an opener. Um, you probably should watch our video about that album. Yeah, yeah we, we do. We have an we'll album review of Def Leppard's Def Leppard. Um. <laughs> Will we explain how, a, what a great opener it is? 
It is. So we won't dwell on that. However, they're not doing that. We heard that they were opening with Rocket. Rocket. Which our first reaction oh, was, what? What? <laughs> But it works because what happens yeah, is they, they the the timer goes down and you hear the uh, are you excitable the whole yeah the whole the, the, place the build, goes black the whole place goes black and then over the loudspeaker they're playing the the intro to excitable mm -hmm. which I again I mean talk about going back to iconic but I mean kind of the a little bit of oh, a yeah. lesser known song B -side on that album B side yeah. of hysteria um, they're playing that are you excitable all the way up to the screen <sighs> um, and then at at the yeah, screen, the lights, the, flash. The, the lights flash, the drums, the drums start, the the uh, screens display the name of the town that they're currently in, in the pyrite, pyrite font. font. So that's what you just see repeated, and then they start to raise slowly rise and leopards out there, and they're they're backlit, so you just see their profiles. Yeah, and, it's um, and if you're watching Joe. this, if you're watching this from the front, you get the full effect. I we were on the side, which made me a little sad for the people that. Hadn't seen them from, the front. Seen them from so the, the front before yeah. because that's really, you get the full effect from the front because we could see around the screens. Yeah. When so, you're in front, it's still um, racing. Joe and Phil are on the bottom there and then on the riser above them is, is Viv and Sav. And, Vivian. and they just, they are just in stone cold poses as it comes up and reveals them until finally Joe Joe goes, brings them in guitar. with that, yeah, the guitar, drums They get spotlit and they hit a chord and he goes, drums. Which, if we had thought about the fact that that's what they would, that they would move that part to the opener, Yes, that's going to get it's you excited. Perfect, and it brings it brings everything in on cue. It just it fits Leopard so well because they are such a an orchestrated, precise production, right? And so just having everything feel dictated from the beginning. There's none of this, you know. Oh, we're just running out and launching into the song kind of thing. Like, no, it's it's all we are we are where we need to be. Everything happens on cue. It's it, I mean, it is a show. Uh, yeah, I don't know. it just it like, feels as you very... saw, we know exactly when they're gonna say what line Joe's gonna say when because he, he has the stock lines he always says at every concert and like it's very much an orchestrated production. Um, but it's but so I just I, it's, it's, I think having them come in on cue like that it just it Guitar? fits them so well. Drums, oh, it's so great. Yeah, and then they just let loose. And then they go into Amble. all that to say it's a great opener. Oh yeah, it, it works. We were so skeptical. We were so skeptical. We were mad. We were like, what the heck? And then. The first, con first we were in Baltimore and we were like, oh, yeah, this, <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> so, should we talk about the one new song they play on tour this year? Um, when Love and Hate Collide. No, actually, but let's talk about this. Oh, I was, I'm, I'm oh, the one new, song. new song that they play. Because they really do. They play mostly their, their classics. Oh. Um, yeah. With the exception, they do play one song off their new album. Um, Man, Man Enough. Enough. So, and that song, I, it's not my favorite on the album. It's not even my favorite that they've had in past set lists. However... It is a very different. I mean, it's very bass heavy. It's it, it's a different tone. I I understand why that was the one that they left in the set list this year, and it's it's, it's so a lot fun. Of fun. It's fun. It's so, a fun song. That's super fun. Yeah, that's a great. But song. now we can talk about Love and Hate Collide. Well, they Hate added Clyde. this back in this year. That song is so good. Um, I I'm sure they've played it before, but I I've never heard them play it before. Um, I don't know. That's that song has special significance for me for reasons I'm not going to get into in a podcast, but. <laughs> So hearing it live though is, and spoiler alert: at the very end, Joe walks out to the end of the catwalk alone, and everyone else gets quiet, and he sings that last "When Love and Hate Collide" as like a solo, just a cappella, like just his voice. When And there's the moment where you're just like, yeah, you still got it. Like, I almost cried the first time. It was so good. Well, it's just where you realize how good, I mean, his, his voice, it still sounds really, really good. I mean, he can't, I mean, I, he can't hit all the high notes and all nearly he's human. anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's human. He can barely hit him back then. He's older, but he still sounds so yeah. good. When his, we, the tone of his voice and everything still sounds really good. When we good saw him on tour last year in Tuscaloosa, um... There, one of our friends lives in an apartment complex. It's an open amphitheater. This apartment complex like right up the way, which is known for being an apartment that you can live in and then go sit on your balcony and just watch any concert for free. And I remember him texting me after the show and being like, my God, Joe sounds just like he does on Hysteria. Like, I can go put my vinyl on right now, Pyromania, and he sounds the exact same. And again, part of that is that he also knows, like, at the end of Hysteria, he, he brings down some of those some of those extra vocals over the top. In the end, he, he brings them down an octave. Um... Mm -hmm. And, and so he, he, he does have those things that he's changed he's very a little bit. Um, yeah, very, yeah. very aware of that, which is, I mean, 
great because you hear sometimes bands and all that that don't do that and it's like, eh, you're just reaching it doesn't work anymore mm-hmm. um so yeah yeah alert yeah that that things like the fourth one it's early in the set things like the fourth song they play but that was a standout for me um well and if only because that's one that they've added back into the set list I, again i think they used to play it um i'm not sure exactly how yeah. long it's been it gone but no one's heard it in a long time so i, I wonder if because i saw on our friend like matt's phone i had that one day and on like Spotify, because it like shows like whatever like top songs, or whatever. It was like when Lil Hick was the top song, like above like Sugar. That was the most I think played it's popular song. Popular in other Which countries, maybe. I think when Lil Hick was like the highest, the most played song or something. So I wonder if they didn't overseas. see this because they just released all of their music on so uh, on not social media on um Dude. Spotify, Visual, like right. yeah, Spotify and Google Play and stuff. I wonder if they didn't go see which songs were like ranking where, and they're like, oh, that song's really high. We should bring that back. Uh, so, yeah, so it makes but, sense. But I'm also wondering if it's not one of those that's that's been really popular overseas that they will play in their overseas shows that they just don't play here yeah and they, then now they, with the digital media thing and all that that they've just ended up deciding to put that back um, in everywhere uh, what's the ballad off of a journalized that they play they, every time they're in england they paper always, sun is one that they that i know they play over there that yeah. they don't play here ever that's, that's that they've that's, said that they're never gonna play here yeah that's your um, story, yeah. that's um which yeah, one no, which, know, which one stand up and which one? i'm blanking um what is the other ballad? it's the, super long uh, title journalized? Um, you never knew. Um, I'd even kill me if she knew I wasn't remembering the name of the song right this moment. Holy have you crap! Ever loved, um, had you ever had your when you sing about it? Yeah. Yes, that yeah, was a big right. hit. No, I, I was also wow, I'm that. disappointed myself for that. But like they I'm, always play that. We're overseas. disappointed. In all of us, um, yes. Yeah, I'm still waiting for them to play Promises. I know they play that sometimes. Oh really? I really want to hear. Abby that has song. seen them play Paper Sun. Maybe. I don't know. Was that at some concert a couple years ago? She's. It, it, it was. I don't remember which one it was, but she's only seen them. In the yeah, but I think years. I remember that, that. But but that is. But I, I think that's one of the that's ones that I heard them specifically mention that they they generally will not play in the states. That they they play overseas. Yeah, oh, that's it's a great lot. song. Um, it's a great album. So anyway, it's um, just interesting. But, but anyway, yeah. Um, they also brought back Two Steps Behind, which I saw them play in 2015, but they haven't in the past couple of years. They brought that back, and that's really fun. Yeah. Would you like to tell us how they play that one? Uh, so they all get out their acoustic guitars. Joe plays guitar. Um, <laughs> Sav keeps he, it his electric bass. <laughs> Rick comes out with his little maraca. Um, it's adorable. Um, they all walk out to the end of the catwalk. They, it's, it's all like lit up in red kind of thing. They just keep a very constant background. And also there's not all the screens and everything. Um, I mean, they strip it down like the song. Um, mm-hmm. They all just come out and they all... They all stay out there the whole song. And they kind of just mill around and, 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 and chat with each other. They have a lot of fun. Yeah, if, if you're where you can see, like... Pay attention to them interacting with each other because it's kind of funny um, during that song. I mean, it's, it is it is very, it's Leopard, right? So it's very scripted. They do the same thing every night. Um, we've seen it multiple times. Rick comes out late with his little maraca and, and, and Vivian goes back and curds and corrals him, forces him into the middle of the group. Rick, is, you know, forces, you know, is, is forced to stay there as long as, you know, however long. And then he escapes, and then, and then he escapes back out to the side. Um, and, and they go through this whole game every night. But it is, it's fun to watch. Um, yeah, it's a good time. Again. They know what the crowd's there for, so. Mm-hmm. And again, um, what is always has always been the heart of Leopard is is is, is that, that that family unit that they are. So in that in that song, you can kind of see that they just love each other and love what they're doing. They just have a good time. Clearly. Um. <laughs> so that's a fun one. That's a fun uh, what else one. do we have? Um. We need to talk about this. <laughs> okay. First thing I know is when I walk out on stage. All right, we know it, it, it's just a thing that we know with all of these bands, right? They, they all come, you know, know they come the from the seventies, stars. they come from the eighties. They've all but made many on. fashion mishaps. Also, generally, generally, Leopard has gotten better over the years. Like in recent years, they've been looking sharper. Vivian maybe has had an influence in that. He's always Clearly. been rather dapper. He is so dapper. Um, Rick always gets out there in his stars. little Union Jack shirt and everything. So he's you know, we kind of ignore him because he's very consistent with his. Yeah. Um, Joe has gone mostly to the mostly black. He'll wear like his sparkly shoes and some some little accents and everything. Gets still, yeah. still half naked usually. Phil Phil is usually um, on point. shirtless, but he recently has started wearing the uh, a colored shirt, a uh, bright red or bright blue, blue, blue. a black vest, and that's quite very a sharp. look for him. Very sharp. Um, Vivian's got the big I've scars actually only, I mean, I've seen him six times. I've only seen him actually. Well, this show was twice. And I've now seen him actually play shirtless. But the one time it was an accident, uh, but he was shirtless. Yeah, I think he was having. I think his shirt just like it looked like when we went back and looked at pictures. From our perspective, he came out wearing a shirt and halfway through, came out not wearing a shirt. Um, after changing out the guitars one time, when we looked back at pictures, it looked like his shirt had come untucked and just rather than fix it, he had just taken it off. 
Yeah. Um, so anyway, that time he was not deliberately shirtless, but um, yeah. anyway, so he's actually he he often wears something now. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sav, Rick <laughs> Savage, he's been working out more lately. He he actually he's actually been looking pretty good lately. Yeah. However, <laughs> he has chosen to wear on this tour. It's like this color. Uh, no, it's, little, it's, little it's, 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 it's way more, more cotton now. candy, satin. It, it, they are like satin pink suit. Suit. It's a suit. Yeah. It's a suit. Um, sometimes, Pant sometimes he'll end up just wearing the pants. He'll take off the jacket at some point yeah. usually. Um, it's very pink. I mean, he looks like the Easter Bunny out there. Yes. It, it was like a roughly white shirt underneath there. Our rock and roll mother it hurts. Our rock and roll mother. So he also, I mean, off stage, he he will wear these like white capris and a shirt, a big with his, shirt with his with his hair, hair haphazardly thrown up. He's still got magnificent hair. Yeah. He does. But he does. Um, but then he throws it up in a ponytail, and he's, I mean, our rock and roll mother. Yes, <laughs> Joe Elliott is our rock and roll father. Um, <laughs> so that was our rock and roll mother. Oh. We love them both very much. But this pink suit, it needs to go. Which it, it, it's. He either has been on point or wearing because that suit. Because the concert, he was wearing that pink suit for you, but for us in Birmingham, that early that week, he was wearing this black jacket thing shirt that was super hot. Like, it was awesome. Like, he was. Yeah, he was all black and white and sparkly so, and everything. Yeah. I mean, what so he usually, does. He's no got great, he does no, no he does. Oh, he does. He's got great fashion sense most of the time, except when he wears pink suit. that suit. But he has worn that suit a lot this tour. He I mean, there a was at one point that I, that I was kind of wondering, is he wearing that every single show? Because all the pictures we were seeing of him a lot were of, in that suit. A lot of times they'll wear basically, this, like, they have three outfits they kind of wear. Yeah. Um, or anyway, three, like, one so that's just, uh, <laughs> be prepared for that. He may or may not. That's yeah. like the biggest downer on Leopard. <laughs> like, yeah. Though I've seen plenty of people who actually like it. Um, really? Mm-hmm. Those poor unfortunate souls. Yeah. The, the, I can see their house. <laughs> It's not the worst thing. I I used to have sheets that looked exactly like the material. (laughs) Which is also why my mom thought satiny seats sheets were a great idea. I really hate them. Phil also has a misstep though, because he has those pants. Oh. Okay. I kind of like those. No, they're They're not not awful. (laughs) They're not the worst. They're not the worst thing Phil's worn. So Phil has has these red plaid. Tartan. Tartan kind of, yeah, uh, pants Tons of that he wears. Very they, fitting. I mean, Those they, are really cool. They look like all his other, you know, rock and roll pants and everything with all the zippers and the, you know, accents and stuff on them. They're super cool, except for that tartan pattern kind of <laughs> thing on them. It's, it, it looks like, so I have three sisters. My mother used to dress us up in, like, the, the that Christmas. plaid for, like, skorts and skirts and stuff for Christmas and all. We'd go take our picture with Santa Claus. That's what the pattern looks like to me. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, yeah, he gets out there and you're like, you're... From London. I don't know. I'm not seeing the plaid thing. Yes. I'm not. It, mm, I don't know. Yeah. It just, it's not the best look for him. He's, his black ones and his jeans look really good. Joe but, has that new jacket, though, that's awesome. With yes. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. The I'm, one with the gold braiding on it. Yeah, that one's awesome. Yeah, he had that in the tour. And I think it kind of glows in the... It does. Because yeah. when we saw the oh, walk yeah. out, the UV. From, it glows. Yeah. It kind of, yeah. That's, it's really cool. Super cool. Um... Yeah. yeah, Joe's been on point. Um, Rick, Rick again just wears the same. Thing Rick wears the exact wears. same shirt yeah. every concert. Vivian, the past couple tours has had like these really thin wispy scarves. He has the big ones back, which makes me really happy. He's yeah, it's they're, they're but they they it's that pop right. You see yeah. them way better. Um, they look they look really good. Mm-hmm. And he's playing with his new. And he has those sparkly shoes so too that he always wears. Yeah, they're great. And that base, I'm gonna steal that damn thing. Watch <laughs> out, Rick Savage. Rick Savage, if you're watching this. We probably have bigger problems than the sentence we're about to say, but I want that base <laughs> so bad. We're going to try and build one, hopefully. Yeah, we'll build one. I want one. It's actually a washburn. We're going to figure it out. Anyway. <sighs> All right. So. What was the closer? You have one that was. Just that they end with the perfect one two punch of. The encore. The encore beam. Well, they close out the main set with sugar. Which is intense. That's high energy. You that's... think, my gosh. Where you How could it be any louder? How could it any But I'm glad they don't close close with that. We'll say, actually, in Nashville, yeah. surprisingly, I mean, so we've been to a lot of Leopard mm. shows. I mean, we had also noticed that it's one of those, like, you know, when you're in a, whether it's a football um, game or, a, oh. or whether you're at a football game or, or a concert or wherever, and, and they're just those those ones that are extra loud. So we went to the University of Alabama, so the Iron Bowl. I remember the mm. first time I ever went to an Iron Bowl at home, I mean, I'd been to who knows how many other football games. And that were loud and intense and all that. Hundred thousand people. And just streaming. realizing, I mean, it was just. I mean, turn you turned that turn, up to eleven. Turned to eleven. Turned, yeah. it, turned it up to eleven. It was just like I didn't know it could get louder, but it mm-hmm. did. Um, and that's kind of how this concert was. Honestly, we've been to a lot of concerts. I mean, not just Leopard, but like a lot of concerts. It was turned up to eleven. Um, it was so loud. And then Joe actually, when he came out at the end, made the comment 
that um, one of the loudest that it was one of the loudest shows that they played. And I, so again, we know all the lines that he says. That is not one of his stock lines. I, I absolutely believe it was at least on the list that they at yeah. least noticed the the change in volume. And I don't know if that was the acoustics of the stadium, yeah, um, or, 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 or the what, arena. or the yeah. arena, or what. But um, it was that was that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah. But he always... It was also it was Vivian's birthday. It was Vivian's yeah. birthday. We got to say happy birthday to him before she's fifty six birthday. It was super cute. That was awesome. Yeah, that was super cute. We have video footage of that. We have video. Um, but yeah. so that was fun. Yeah, yeah. And then of course Joe comes out after after the you know, comes out and <laughs> as he always does. Rick introduces one for you, and they go into the Unter Gluten Gluten Globen, and then you're like, aha, this is what I was missing. Right. And then that goes into photograph. If anyone has never noticed. There's a line in Rock, Rock of, of Ages. Ages. The line in Rock of Ages that says, give me one more for the road. It's our conspiracy theory that they play it as the second to last song On for that reason. Because they do. They give you one more for the road. I mean, that's the... It's they, it's what that song's... You know? Yeah. It works. <laughs> We're going to sing it that way every time, at least. Oh, yeah. That's how I will always interpret it that way. Joe gets super sassy in that song. He does. Preening. Smudge yeah. just like... Sneering. He's awesome. He's he's the rock star. I love Joe. I love them all. <laughs> but no, Joe really does. He has the he has the such a great rock star aura. He's such a present. That leopard skin coat. It works. It works. Mm -hmm. Works for him. So should we wrap up the night? Okay. Well, I guess. Okay. I was gonna say should we all pick like who took the night? For us, it's leopard. Is it? Oh, it's leopard. Easy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's every review I've seen. Even even the ones where I would not necessarily think that's true. Where where leopard. Uh, opened and journey was closing, which you would think that I mean, whoever's oh, closing to follow leopard. Gosh, who, whoever's closing has the has the advantage, right? Because I mean, that's the, you, it's dark outside. Like it's been built to that. Like, it's been it's been built to that you're 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 waiting for it. your fans, the ones that are there for you are most excited. Are most excited. They were kind of waiting through whoever came first. I mean, but I, I think when it comes down to it, it's what we were talking about earlier. To, to follow, and this is what I've seen repeated in review after review that. Uh, and most of the ones I've seen have been with Journey closing, and they've kind of said it was just that Journey was great. However, comma. But to follow and act like leopards, you know, even though yes, they bring in way more of the you know emotional songs and those kind of things, and, and, and in a sense, they 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 have the the much bigger classic of Don't Stop Believing, and and that may be the moment the 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 greatest moment of the night. However, to follow Leopard, it, they just it doesn't quite stand up. Um, yeah. you, there's too many. There's too many. The, the long solos and all they do. They, they you just you can't do that if you're following a band there. like yeah. Leopard. Yeah. Don't stop um, believing is the what most downloaded song ever. Yeah. Really? Yep. It's the it is. Yes. It, it is the most downloaded song. So again, um, that's a, such a huge trump card, and that's really just a, still, that, that is not a diss on Journey. Journey no. is fantastic. That is a compliment to Leopard. There. Yeah. Uh, they are just so sharp and so. They wipe the stage with yeah. whoever they play with. Yeah. It does yeah. not matter. I mean, those both have been great as standalone concerts. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I mean, Absolutely. we've I, I've seen them both as standalone. Yeah, and so concerts. I'm not sure if it's a, a good thing or a bad thing that they're together. Is it is it too much? <laughs> it's an exhausting night. It's I will exhausting. say it's, it's an exhausting night. night. Um, it's so fun. Yeah. Another take I thought on, I've heard on we that. We were sore the next day. Yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> There'll be footage of you two making. Oh, God. So I actually have heard a take on that um, that was that they they don't fit together perfectly. That they're not. They're not quite oil and water, but they're also not peanut butter and jelly. Kind of putting those two together. Mm, yeah. Um, sure. Which I think I think that's fair. Well, I think that it's not. I mean, th there there is a consistency. You get the 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 kind of the cla you've got classic lineups in both of them. That you you've got two, honestly, they're probably two of the best '80s acts that are still out there. Oh yeah. Sure. I mean, I would absolutely say Leopard is and Journey out for sure. They're probably. on the list yeah, who too. Would you, who would you place them? With? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I don't know. The, um, the, yeah. I would probably even be comfortable saying they would be the two best. They might be still the best, out there yeah. currently yeah. playing. Yeah. Um, and so to put them together, the, there is a cohesiveness in that, but then not quite because they are such different. I mean, they're different. They're yeah. very different shows yeah. and they're both so great standalone. Yeah. And because they're co-headlining and they're both playing full sets, mm -hmm. you get the full, it, I mean, and it's like you're at one concert and then you're at another concert. Yes. And I've heard the, when they did this before in like, oh, six. Sure. Yeah. Somewhere around there. It might be, oh, eight. It was around when, it was when they were touring. Yeah. It was the last time they, they co-headlined yeah. before. And I remember seeing something from them. I think it was Phil. Yeah, was it's saying, their album that has all the covers on it and everything. So it was the oh the great album for that. Go album. buy just, it. Yeah, they play track two, rock on in every right. show, and it's awesome.
biased because there's a base solo that leads right. into it. Let's that's awesome. Continue. Anyway, um, I think it was Phil who was saying that it works really well because because of that fact that they're not quite the same, but they're all separate. In that, it draws into people because they do have separate fan bases that yeah. don't necessarily overlap. We're, we're in that middle section there where we love both bands, but there are people who have more yeah. than one or the other, and so it brings well, and all drive, of us not, to the concert. And it's not so different, it's going to drive fans away from yeah. not going, right? Yeah, yeah, right. so it just it's, brings it's in a, so many It's a many safe non I mean, they are, they are the high, currently the, the highest grossing tour. Yeah, yeah um, I just saw that a couple minutes yeah. ago, yeah. yeah. So... I mean, yeah. it's it's an insane tour. They have all. I mean, it, it was fun as you, if you go look at their social medias and things like that. They are so clearly enjoying touring together oh, yeah. as well oh, because yeah. they pull in such I saw that crowds. Video of Stu, the dog. Stu right. the dog. Go yeah. follow Rockstar Stu on like Vivian's every. dog. He's adorable. He goes to all the concerts. Is that little earmuffs he's got? Yeah, yes. yeah. He wears earmuffs. He's um, little earmuffs. You gotta protect the dog's hearing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there was there's this one shot of. Uh, that was in some video that was a, co a collage kind of video that they posted at one point and there's this clip in there of phil walking out um onto the stage at some stadium show that they did mm -hmm. and he's i mean ear to ear grin talking to the camera just like and of course we're playing a, a stadium tonight like yeah. like of course kind of thing. i mean just kind of i mean clearly so overwhelmed by that too you know yeah. like yeah. clearly they clearly appreciate that like wow this is incredible that we still get to come out here and play packed out stadiums like yeah this. when we saw them in atlanta it was very again we've seen them like six ten times like it was very clear that they were on, on like a new level of like euphoria the way like just it has excised the workers i think we we had such a massive crowd we had a friend who lives in atlanta now or, or was living there this summer and he was saying that because he was at the concert too but he was further back he's like i've never seen this stadium brave stadium this pack like not for a braves game not for anything i think this is the biggest crowd suntrust park has ever, has seen. ever seen wow and it actually didn't just come from him i actually saw some other things oh, yeah, there there I, I'm, I am i am almost I feel certain saying that i'm almost certain that that was that that was confirmed that that was the the, the most sold out that stadium had ever been yeah um, and you could you could tell that all the guys were really <laughs> they're really enjoying this tour um, and we're really enjoying this tour so yeah it's just a good time do we want to try and pick a favorite song by each act, or is that way too hard? I, this this will be interesting because it's different than your favorite. Even if they play all the hits, it's different than your favorite yeah, song. Yeah, live right? because the live the it. live version of what, what what did you enjoy most live? And maybe not even what's your favorite song, but what what maybe because it might be what took you by surprise. Yeah, what, you what did, okay, let's do a journey first. Yep. And you oh, what's the song I don't know, but it'll surprise me. Oh, uh, La Du Da. That was fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know they could get that heavy. That was really cool. It's a great song. Okay. Good um. Yeah. <sighs> I can pick Journey. I know mine. Mine well, is any way you want it. Mm. So I will say that's because Journey is again another song that I've been vaguely familiar with before, just because you can't help it. Can't any way you want it though was a song that I always heard on like radio jingles and like things like that. And so that's what I had always thought of it as. It was not until hearing it live the first couple times that it was like, oh wait, no, this is actually a song, and it's so much fun. I mean, that's the fun. song that would get, that got me excited about Lepre about Journey's set. Um, yeah. Honestly, it was, it's just it's a ton of fun. You can't help but get pulled into it. So I, yeah. Can I mention two? Pick one, and then oh, you can okay. give an honorable mention. Okay, I will pick faithfully. I love that song, and I love the this little speech, mm -hmm. the stock speech that he gives going into it, and then just those first chords, hearing them live, kind of like love bites. You hear like those first three notes of burn, you know, love bites. When those hit you in real life, that's just there's something about that song live. Um, no matter how many times you heard it, it's gonna feel like you're hearing it again for the first time, and it's gonna, yeah, no. Um, that's where everyone had their phones up, right? That's where the whole. Yeah. No, no, that's, uh, for that's, that's, lights. that's for lights. That's for lights. That's for lights. People right. probably pulled them out back out again probably. before it, so yeah. Open um, Arms and Faithfully are both. I mean, the ones that they take it down a notch, and they're both very much that way. My honorable mention, which won't surprise you, um, so it might be my favorite Journey song. Might be is um, Be Good to Yourself. Oh, that's absolutely my favorite Journey song. I adore it live. Be Good to Yourself. It's so fun. Um, yeah. But I, I have to go faithfully. I one. didn't know "Be Good to Yourself" until I heard it live, and that's what made me go back and listen to. It. Honestly, that's that's those opening chords yeah. too. Ugh. The piano. Yeah. Jonathan King's a national treasure. Amen. <laughs> and Greg Raleigh before him was awesome. Let's pay credit where credit is due. Sure. Um. Okay. For Leopard. That's wow. for me. <laughs> for me, and it's not my favorite song per se, but yeah. I just thought the energy was fantastic with Sugar. Just yeah. hearing that live, everyone singing along was fantastic. Yeah. Sure. Again, it's Jonathan King karaoke. High right? energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so loud. It was <laughs> so loud. Everyone just screaming out the chorus. Yeah. Well, it's a great song to scream, Absolutely. right? Because it's not overly it's musical not really, and all yeah, melodic yeah, there. You, you can, you can, just, out, you can yeah. just belt it out. And everyone it's knows so it. Much. It's I mean, almost like everyone's, rap, yeah. so everyone's participating. So right. it was 
That was, and every, was very intense. I, I think in the, in the words of the band members <laughs> and during that song, every woman thinks she's a stripper. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, everyone... Uh, I thought song, I was a stripper right, for a moment there. <laughs> everyone gets up there and is, is dancing at all more than any other song sure. they play. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yes. You yeah. get that moment being like, do you take sugar? One love but two. And everyone feels like a girl on stage in 1987. Oh, yeah. that's great. All right, your turn. Shit. Oh, God. Do you? Yeah. I don't know. Can you tell me what it is? Um. See, do I go with the one that makes me want to cry or actually cry? Or do I go with the one that makes me lose my mind the most? I just. You have to just. I mean, that's why, like. Again. Actually, be good to yourself or open arms are probably my favorite from Journey Setlist. However, I'm with any way you want it because that's just. I had way more of a reaction to that one. Than the other. Does that make sense? Even though they're yeah. they're opposite reactions on different sides of the scale, True. but as much as I enjoy their rendition of um, "Let Me Collide This Tour," and as much as I have actually cried more than once when Hysteria comes on, which is what she whispered in my ear, "Let's Get Rocked" is the one that every time I hear, every time Joe walks, Scanning yeah. goes, "Do you want to get rocked?" Yeah. I lose my freaking mind. It's not Absolutely. my favorite song by them, but no, live. It's not, but live, it's completely live. live. It is. In Absolutely. the words of an article that we once read, if when Joe Elliott declares, let's get the rock out of here, your response is not to throw up a fist yeah. salute, then you are officially dead inside and have no soul. That's I mean, a it's great just, article too. It, right, yeah, yeah it, that's not perfectly quoted, but sentiment is there. It's that. It works very well. Yeah. That's actually a song I don't care for that much on the album, to be honest. No, I don't care for it. It's, yeah. I, oh. Terrible video, too. I it, it is an awful video. No, I actually, I mean, I, I enjoy the song. It's just when I find myself skipping on that album. Because yeah. I like the others on it better. Well, it's a song meant to just, be played loud it, and live. It's meant to be loud. Right. And yeah. it's super it's, fun to sing along. Yeah. However, Absolutely. I will say that's the, again, it's because I know I love it live. That's what made me and go we back can, and we listen to it. we role play the dad and the kid at the beginning? Yes. Um... <laughs> It, that's super fun too. Down yeah. through my radio. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. still sing "Shag the Dog" instead of "Walk the Dog" because they're what the hell? sixty years old and they're you know still immature boys. So I think Phil got, got I think Phil messed it up and then got everyone else to mess it up with him. But yeah, yeah, but now they just absolutely deliberately sing it wrong. So then, yeah, so yeah, I'm we have gonna... never heard them sing "Walk the Dog." So yeah, so I'm, I'll, I'll go with "Let's Get Rocked," but yeah, hysteria does make me cry sometimes. Um, what's my favorite? I didn't cry in Nashville. I noticed. <laughs> I was worried. I just throw up all the old pictures. Yeah, that's hysteria. It's at the end of the set. Hysteria, it's towards the end of the set. You know they're going off fairly soon. And they're throwing up all these old pictures from over the years. They go through all, through chronologically We've through all the years. We've seen almost all of them. <laughs> it's, um, and it's, it, that's a, it's a really cool moment just showing some of the history of the band. Um, so that's that one's great for that. Yeah. My favorite live. And Joe throws in the, the extra, like, we could be heroes. This yeah, tour. he started doing that this Just tour at the very end. Oh. Yeah. He always calls out the city. Like, How about you, Nash? How about you, Bobby? Um, there were so many. This show in particular, it was it was so loud. The energy was fantastic the whole way through. So uh, this is where I'm a is little swayed because I have three? because I have seen it. Um, probably not. Oh, okay. It might be. It might be like three. Um, it's not one that I'm kind of, I don't think okay. I'm, I don't think I'm going to pick it. Um, okay. it's, because we have seen them a number of times, right? Like, I know typically how song, their songs hit me a lot. And it was a little different. Honestly, Let's Get Rocked, I got way more into that this time than I usually do, mm. even. Um, yeah, there were a couple like that this, this show. They just, I mean, you see it from a different perspective, right? Every time. Um, mm -hmm. and it was, it was a different crowd. Um, and they were super into it, and that was great. Which made the arena songs way more fun. Mm -hmm. um, when Love and Hate Collide's gorgeous, but um, <laughs> I, I I think so I liked good. When Love and Hate Collide just because we didn't. This is not, I'm not picking it. I think mm -hmm. I liked it so much, partially just because they yeah. haven't been playing it. Yeah. It's it's new. Two steps behind. I've at least seen so many videos of them playing it. But mm -hmm. even though I really appreciate actually seeing that in person, it wasn't as new. See, it didn't feel as new seeing it. Sure. Um, super hard it's really hard um it's right you just want to pick everything there, that, that's, there's, there's one reasons, thing there's reasons to love all of that's them. one thing um, we haven't mentioned that i just want to really quickly touch on is we talked about this at the first concert especially but when you come away from journey set almost feels to drag like by the time you end journey you're like, okay that was a good amount of time but leopards goes by so it, fast it do you feel really that fast. too how many songs was it there it's equal amount of time they're both on stage like an hour and a half 
They're four Finnish I, songs. It did not feel like an hour and a half. Yeah. Leopard goes by that yeah, fast. Before I, you know it, you're at his. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're just sugar, you're so into it yeah. the whole time. You're so you're roped so, into it the just, whole time that it keeps you rolling right absolutely. along with them. You don't have that moment well, of sitting back and kind of thinking. There's no, there's not yeah. really any slow. Well, there's some slow songs, but the energy doesn't go down. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. No piano I, solos. You know. I don't really know how to pick this, to be honest. It's hard. Um, it's really hard. I'm gonna pick Animal. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna pick Animal. Because okay, look, really Animal Animal is probably my favorite it's so song. Good. It's probably my favorite Def Leppard song. Yeah. Um, now what she's mentioned about Rock of Ages, I so Rock of Ages was one song so again, so I had never heard Def Leppard in my life. Mm -hmm. I knew that she was super into them. Um, but I really didn't grow up listening to any music, uh -huh. or anything like that. Never heard Def Leppard in my life. Um, she introduced me to Viva to Viva Hysteria. We watched that. I started listening to Hysteria. Anyway, we ended up going up to see our friend Abby up in DC. Took a twelve-hour car ride. Listened to a lot of Leopard on the way up there. Went on the way back and everything. Um, we were going up for Rick Allen's art show up there, and so we got to meet him. We did. Um, so there was that whole thing. So basically, like within a couple weeks, I was very f suddenly obsessed with Def Leppard, uh -huh. um, and and go I got to know them very quickly. Um, so the first time she played me Mirrorball, which is their live album. Um, and it was on my home from that. Right. And I, so it hit Rock of Ages and I lost my mind. I thought we were gonna crash. I already knew, <laughs> she I was, was driving, driving I was driving the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was concerned for my life. I already knew the song, right? I'd had Pyromania for like a, for a few for a few days at least, mm -hmm. um, and so and I and I'd heard the song several times, and it had never. It was just one of those times when a song just hits you. Yeah, and it just hits you right. And and hearing it in that live context, it was suddenly like even on a digital oh, format of that live. Right, it was for like sure. oh this, and it still does something like that. It when I take a step back, I don't think it's my favorite Death Leopard song. Mm -hmm. It's. I don't know. It might be actually be between Animal and, and Rock of Ages live as well for me. I mean, Animal. It's, it's hard just, to beat live. You hear that intro to Animal, right? And it's Ugh. it's just, it's so it's unique. It it pop, it pops out, and I do I love that song. It's, it's very bright mm, live with all the signs. behind It's very them. bright. They have all these like neon signs and everything behind them. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Rock of Ages, the energy of it though. It, it's what I mean. It's the first song after the, that they come back with after the encore. Yeah. I think the I think maybe the reason I won't pick it is actually because it's the second to last song. And I'm always getting a little sad by then, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't want it to be time to hear that song. I don't want to hear it because I know that it's going to be. I mean, it's, they, that was their encore last year as well. I mean, they played Rock yeah, of Ages photograph. Off. That is their encore. They're done after that. And so in that sense, I don't love it live. However, at this show where the energy was so great, everyone jumped up singing that one as well. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I It's hard. So yeah, but... Either animal I'm, or that? Yeah, I, I'm, I, animal's a good choice. I'm gonna pick animal because it's up at the front half of the set, right? Like it's, yeah. it's they play it really. It's like their second song. It's, yeah. And it's just, uh, it, it's just fun. To it's sing. just fun. It's and you're like, oh, that's right. This is why I'm here. Right. <laughs> and it feels like classic leopard. I mean, oh yeah. Also, so. kind of fitting that this tour they're going from rocket into animal because that's how it goes on the album. Mm -hmm. But all right, did we finish. All right, it's book. Fun facts. Yeah, let's do it. All right, tell me when to stop. Stop. One. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I guess we don't do this, right? No. Next page, then. Oh, should uh, I go to the next page? I don't know. Just... I'll go to the next page. And there's only... Oh, no, I'm not going to go to the next page. <laughs> Maybe. The page after that. If you had to select one thing in life you feel the most guilty about, what would it be? That's no fun. I don't want to record the answer to that. Yeah, that's maybe not. I, I would Statue feel guilty. If I were to steal oh, one. Neil Sean's guitar, I would feel guilty about that. Would you though? Would I'd... you feel guilty? No. no. We could do this one. If you could rid the earth of one thing, what would it be? Ooh. I could rid this the earth one below of one it. thing. Popular choice is mosquitoes. Spiders. But I, I'm aware that they're good for our ecosystem. Well, let's take out that's... the whole, like, God made them for a reason thing. Sandra's calling me. Give us give us a couple minutes. We can call her back. She can wait a couple more minutes. <laughs> yes, danger zone is my ringtone. If I could rid the earth of one thing. Yeah, take out any repercussions or whatever. This is not <laughs> Axel Rose's voice. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> you really don't like him. Ouch. Yeah, I really I'm really not a fan of him, to be honest. Wow, of all the things. That's of all the things. No, I was just thinking of like music just like irritates me when it comes on like you know and it's it's Axl Rose's voice that's what does it there's probably better choices but if I could get rid of one band it actually probably wouldn't be them but um I'm probably gonna stick with spiders <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go stick with mosquitoes. And <laughs> can, I'm not getting rid of him. I'm just getting rid of his voice. He's just mute now. What aerial thing? I don't know. Okay. All right, let's go. All right, it's been fun. See you guys. Uh, until next time. And there will be a next time. Do us a favor, yeah? Don't forget us. And we won't forget, forget you. you.